So, uh, Xstep is a not-for-profit that we set up uh, last year with my co-founders Nandan Nilekani, Rohini uh, Nilekani. Uh, Nandan Nilekani, all of you are aware of. Rohini, his wife, has been funding uh, education philanthropy for the last two uh, decades. And so, uh, last year we got together and uh, looked at, uh, in education, where is it that we can make an impact? And we selected a very, very small segment of basic literacy and numeracy. Uh, there are a lot of wonderful efforts going on, but we took this sliver and we said that at this one inch space, we'll, kind of, we'll go a mile deep, which means whatever solution we come up with, we wanted to reach 200 million children in five years. At that point, we we're not sure what that solution would be, but we were clear on the outcome which is we want every child in India to have better access to learning opportunities. And the thought itself evolved over months as we spoke to hundreds of experts in education in India, US, uh, academics, for-profits, not-for-profits, technologists, to understand why do we have such a crisis of early learning in the country. I don't want to go too deep into that, but. Uh, as a nation, we now recognize it, and even the Prime Minister has talked about improving learning outcomes. So, to begin with, we wanted XTEP to be an infrastructure and not a solution. It was a big, big decision for us. What we realize is there are, are a lot of people with wonderful solutions. Instead of one more solution, which we were sure would not help us reach our goal of 200 million children in five years, what if we created a technological infrastructure on which others could build their solutions and somebody else would innovate? So, X step is infrastructure, not a solution. Is that something we see in our day-to-day -day lives? Yes. The GPS satellites released by the US Department of Defense and made open is infrastructure on which a solution called Google Maps came, on which a solution called Uber and Ola came. We use Ola and Uber every day. We use Google Maps every day. We do not think about GPS. That is infrastructure. The World Wide Web, another example of infrastructure. The roads we go on, it doesn't matter what automobile you use or what transport you use. The road is there, infrastructure. So what we realized is in education, especially in primary education, there is a need to create a kind of infrastructure which amplifies the efforts of all those who are already doing great work in solving the problem. And it could enable and empower a lot more people to innovate on top. So the core of our X-Step infrastructure is what we call as a digital spine. It's just that Lego thing that you see at the bottom. Just, that's it. And on top of that, we want the community of uh, educationists to create assets, to create templates for content creation, and somebody to create the actual unit content, and somebody else to configure it like the way we configure uh, our iTunes playlist. Let me explain this with an example, if this sounds too esoteric. So here's an example of a simple way of teaching a child alphabets, the Indian Aksharas. The concept is learning alphabet. It's a pedagogy used in Rajasthan, but a lot of others use it. It's developed by another technology company, and the template is flashcards, if you've seen this. So a child kind of guesses the number and the, the, the letter and the letter keeps on changing. And uh, the way this was built is at the bottom when I told you about the digital spine, all we have there are abstracted models, in this case of a word net. The relationship between words, the lexical relationship, the uh, syntactical relationship, so on and so forth. It's like when you use Excel, it's just the formula, not the inputs of the formula. That's an abstracted model. That's what we have at the base. What that resulted in is the community used that infrastructure to create assets, in this case, WordNet entries. 
So all the different words, for example, the words squirrel in Hindi, in Kannada, and the advantage is different communities can work on this in parallel, each creating the asset for their own community. And there's not one organization that is first doing Kannada than Hindi. So here the expertise is that of language teachers. Whereas in the previous one, it is highly, highly scarce PhDs, linguists, researchers, who have a lot of knowledge, but there are very, very few of them. So what we have done is abstracted that into technology models and made that available to the next layer of experts, the language teachers. Once they have created the assets, we have a next set of experts, the pedagogues and the designers, who create interactive learning uh, templates around interactive learning. We have used templates in PowerPoint, right? It's as simple as that. On top of that, we have the people who actually create content. They are the people who are closest to the child, the teachers. They know what kind of words to be taught, in what sequence, and they're just using this entire uh, stack to configure a solution that works best for their child in their context, uh, in their language, in their dialect. At every layer here, there is data which is there. And that data is again provided as an open community infrastructure. So, two things here. A different set of group of experts came together, each working in their own way to create a public good, to create a kind of innovation which would have been difficult for any one organization to do. And that is the power of infrastructure. What it enables others to build on. And the kind of innovation it allows. When they opened up GPS back in 90s, they would never have thought that a, a taxi company, for lack of a better word, would be worth tens of billions of dollars by using that technology. And that is the power of innovation by the society, rather than just one organization or a group of people. So if what I talk to you sounds like Star Trek, no, it is real. Uh, we worked on this platform for a year. We launched it in July. It's just three, four months. But even in that time, we've had a whole lot of people using it in different use cases for their own context. Some governments have started using it. Some not-for-profits have started using it. Some companies are creating content on it. And there is a private ecosystem also of people for profits who are using it to, uh, well, make more money and deliver solutions. But what is happening is because they are all on the platform, silos are getting dissolved. Now, one organization can use the work of another. And a third organization can build off this. And as you see here, this looks busy because this is what is happening. Everybody is leveraging each other's work. And all of this is open societal good. Data, a very, very powerful enabler of driving system accountability. And uh, every step de generates data which is available to the whole ecosystem. So we set some crazy goals. As of now, we're on track. And the way this will is working is you can take any, as of now, Android device. You can and the content that is created is available on it. You can go to the web and create content. It's like uh, creating content through PowerPoint uh, in any Indian language or math. So some expert goes and creates content. Somebody else can use it offline, free of cost, uh, anywhere. And all, all of the data is captured and sent back to the uh, system and society to make sense of it, to research on it, and figure out what's working. That is the basic idea behind uh, Take step, and uh, we call this a societal platform approach, where one group builds out the basic backbone infrastructure. The others come and use that infrastructure to create their own solutions, and somebody else who otherwise could not have participated in education comes and creates even more innovative solutions on top. I'll end there. Thank you. <laughs>